Hello there, everyone. Coming to you from YouTube. This is Guns Gotaku on my new mirrorless camera, my Sony A6400. There might be a review on that in the future, but uh, I decided I need to post something to my YouTube channel again, and uh, what better way to do it than on my new camera with this nice, ugh, this nice little camera, and to talk about it's in a bouquet right now because of the Sigma lens. But my new Eames lounge chair that I have been sitting in for the last month. So I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube of replica chairs and not a lot of reviews about the actual chair uh, because it's really expensive. That chair on sale, this is the baseline chair, cost me $5,000. $5,000. Now to a lot of people that is a ridiculous price and it is. That is not a price or I would even suggest to anyone to buy a chair. But I will actually give you a little bit of reasons why I bought this chair. So as a little kid and growing up, I actually enjoyed the Fraser, Fraser uh, TV show quite a lot. I even went back and watched the Cheer, Fraser Cheers episodes. Like I'm, I love Cheers as well, but like Fraser was like a show, that smart comedy that really spoke to me and, and it was really good for me. Um, so the reason why I'm uh, talking to you about this is the reason why I bought this chair. I have never been in a position to buy that chair ever in my life. But I luckily got into a company that uh, merged with another and allowed me to get enough money to actually purchase this chair without it really harming me. I've been a pr in a pretty good financial wizardry from my life in the Navy and saving a bunch of money and where I got to a position where I could buy something like this without worrying about the consequences of it. And the other benefits to buying a Herman Miller Eames lounge chair, an official Herman Miller Eames lounge chair made by, uh, designed by Charles and Ray Eames, uh, is because that chair will always be worth $5,000 or more. I even bought it on sale, so it's actually worth more than $5,000 as we speak. I can always sell that chair for what I paid for or more for the rest of my existence in my life. No matter the condition of the chair unless you know it's like ripped in half and the leather's been completely ripped up but you know like it, as long as i maintain this chair and keep good make the leather supple and swift the shit out of it uh it'll be good so uh, the the exact chair i went with and i'll post links down below in my youtube video of the one i went with i went with the walnut veneer uh, not veneer but the walnut uh plywood shell the one that isn't oil rub. The problem with oil rub versus the regular uh, laminate shell is that the oil one, you, twice a year, you have to literally rub it with oil, like the old classic wood chairs. Otherwise, it'll fade and crack and start messing up. So that's why that I went with the laminate so I could just swiffer it and it'll be just in good condition all the time. Uh, I went with the MCL leather, which is the closest to the original leather that the original 1956, uh, I'll, I'll reference the actual leather later correctly, the actual 1950s Eames lounge chair came with a particular leather. They don't really make that one anymore, but the MCL leather is the one that's closest to it. They do make other options for this chair that make it more expensive. You can get the top grain leather, which basically is pre-aged looking already it already gives you the whole point of this chair uh from charles and Ray Eames, they wanted to give the fit and look of a baseball mitt and like the like a worn catcher's mitt or worn uh or pitcher's uh, mitt basically they wanted that same leathery feel as if you're sitting in a glove and it just wraps around you and i will say that is pretty much what they designed here uh but to talk about price again so as I said, I paid $5,000 for this chair. You could get replicas from anywhere from $400, $500 to around the average of $600, all the way up to $900 to $1,000. So the $900 to $1,000 are usually name brand-ish uh, replicas, like from Manhattan Home Design and stuff like that, who actually bought their own Eames Lounge chair, reverse engineered it, because since it was made in the 1950s, the copyright or whatever the trademark is basically gone and anyone can make these chairs today the problem is, is they don't most of the time the replicas they aren't made the same fit and finish of the original one. this is made in um, the u.s and hand handcrafted hand put together everything is handmade 
on this chair. Now, that's not to say the other replicas aren't, but they don't have the Herman Miller name, and a lot of people are buying it for the name. In hindsight, I would not buy this chair uh, if I didn't have my specific reasons for buying the chair. Like, spending $5,000 a chair is ridiculous. Uh, I don't think it's worth $5,000. I think the, the, what it, what's made it $5,000 is the fact that it's a Charles Raisin's design, and it's actually from Herman Miller, which actually makes really good furniture. In such a modern design, that's what it is. But let me rotate from this view to the actual chair, and then we will continue this review from the actual chair where I will list through some of my different aspects of this chair. Stand by while I move back. So we've actually moved over to the actual chair now. So this is me sitting in it. It is super comfortable. It's a beautiful, beautiful chair. Very, very comfortable. And uh, I'd like to go over the aspects of why I chose this chair. One, I chose this chair going back on the Fraser aspect. And I wanted the actual classic Eames chair. I wanted black leather. They have this in brown and white. And really the other type of wood that is best for this chair is the Brazilian rosewood, I think it's called. I'll have to research that. That's the one that we basically hunted that tree to extinction so they don't make it in that. There is a polysunder wood that's a little, it's about a thousand dollar difference between this and the walnut. But the reason why I went with the walnut is my IKEA desk table is actually a walnut uh, walnut desk, and then I also went with a Noguchi table, which is also in walnut. So I have walnut uh, veneer t desk. I got this walnut a plywood shell, um, and then I got a walnut Noguchi. So it all matches and it looks good, and it's actually cheaper. Uh, this chair was cheap in the sense that this is only five thousand dollars. Uh, reasons why I chose this chair in particular are one comfort, and if you want to give me a, a want me to give a scale or a review structure, I am not an expert in reviews on chairs, but let's say let's say one to ten in comfort level, because one to five is a little bit too small, I guess, for chairs. I guess I just just pulling that out of my ass, but I would give the comfort level of this chair from a month of sitting in it and sitting in it every day around a nine like i mean i've sat in some like really comfy like recliner chairs i've got an electric recliner that used to be here if you look at my twitch channel i used to have like smoking sessions and other sessions where i'm uh reading from this chair uh from not this chair from this position from my electric recliner this chair without any other uh any other thing just constantly in this position it is in the perfect reclined position and i could also sit up too What's really nice is I can move up. I could actually sit up and, and be like talking with my friends or talking online or whatever like that. And I could sit up and I'm still comfortable because this lower lumbar is actually propping me up a little bit. And if I wanted to sit up lower, I could just put an extra cushion back there. But there's just multiple uses for this chair. Well, multiple uses. It's only for sitting. But multiple positions that I could be comfortable in this chair. But this is the prime position of the chair with the ottoman. But you can also kick the ottoman away you, and just sit like that. But ah, I don't want to rest my legs, but sit like that. This is comfortable. But with the ottoman, it's super comfortable if I could get it to move closer to me. <laughs> so this is super comfortable. I'm also going to get like a 1950s like side table here uh, just to match the motif. But, you know, I, I just like this, this chair is ridiculously comfortable and I love it. And what I've noticed is as I've sat in it, the leather has become more supple and is starting the aging organic process. Eventually, this chair in the next five, ten years is going to get shiny and shiny. As it absorbs the oils of my skin and body, you know, that's just what naturally happens in any chair you sit in. The leather is going to take the shape and the suppleness of what I give it, which is my body. So that's, that's what's really cool about this chair. Um, but yeah, nine ten. Like the reason why I don't give a perfect ten is because no chair is a hundred percent comfortable. I don't give a shit who the fuck you are. No chair is a hundred percent comfortable. That's never gonna happen uh, because. But I will say that I have actually napped in this chair and passed out. Like just like for two hours, woke up. Oh my god, I'm I'm, I'm awake <laughs> and I'm so comfortable. And I actually have back problems. 
uh, from being in the Navy, from crawling in the submarine and um, stretching my back out. You know, being a little bit overweight doesn't help, but you know, my back is a little bit screwed up for the Navy as well. Uh, so this chair has like almost eliminated most of my back problems when I'm sitting. Like I'm super comfortable. Um, let's go on to the next category I would say for this chair is style. This chair is a 10 out of 10 in style. You can't, this is what everyone thinks of in mid-century modern furniture. This is what comes up in any Google search. Besides, you know, some other, that little, that marble table, that one comes up, that a Gucci table comes up. But for lounge chairs in particular, this one comes in right next to the womb chair, the egg chair. This chair is the quintessential of all mid-century Meyer chairs, and I'm glad to own it. This is going to be a family heirloom for me. It brightens up any part of your room. Uh, it, it just looks good. Let's go on to uh, another factor that I'd like to think of for this chair. And that is, besides style, just space. You could look at this chair right here. I have a, I have plenty of room here. This does not take up that much room. You, th it, it, it seats, I'm a, I'm a big guy, wide guy, and it fits me perfectly. And it doesn't take up that much space in the room. Now the ottoman does take up a little bit extra room. Like if you have a recliner, then, you know, it should be like this. And then you wouldn't have that way. But even with without the ottoman even there, it's, it's like the other thing for space wise is let's say you're having a conversation with somebody. You just need an extra chair. You know, you could use this ottoman as a stool. It has enough weight capacity to sit a 250 pound man. I'm pretty sure. I mean, I've sat in it plenty of times and it's very, very comfortable. It uses foam. The original Eames lounge chairs uh, actually used uh, goose feathers, I think. But now they use a memory foam that is somewhat similar in it. But as this chair ages, it's actually going to get more comfortable. So that comfort 9 out of 10, it might actually become a 9.5 or something like that. Or in between a 10, 9 and 10. Because as it ages, it's going to get more comfortable. As the leather gets more aged and more supple, uh, it will become a better chair. The other thing is, is like, as I said before, there are different leather options you can get for this chair from Harmony Leather. What, uh, the person I bought it from was Design Within Reach, who are one of the actual retail uh, people for the Eames Lounge Chair. You can get it shipped, or you could actually go in store. Uh, I recommend if you have a Design Within within Reach store, you go down there and actually sit in the chair if you enjoy it. But is it worth $5,000? No. This chair is not worth $5,000. Did I spend $5,000 for it? Yes. And why did I spend $5,000? Because I wanted it. And it was worth it to me at the time for that $5,000. It was worth it to me. It's not worth $5,000 in my opinion. But you're paying for the design. You're paying for the workers who are hand making this thing and stuff like that. And that's just my general thought process behind this chair in particular. It's a very good looking chair. It's got the style. It's got the comfort. It doesn't take up that much space. And it, in general, it's just a good looking chair. Now, you can't just get this chair and put it in a room with like a bunch of clutter and other BS and stuff. It's not going to look good. You have to make sure your space works for it. But in my particular thing, I'm using this as an alternate stream station because I have my uh, Rode pod mic here and everything seems to be working just fine. It looks really, really good. I enjoy the chair. And if I had to put it from a, uh, let's say all those factors in, let's go for just an overall one to five on this chair. Uh, it's definitely a 4.5 out of five. I will not say a full five because once you go, go to the comfort level, I'm not gonna be able to sit. A, a, in a total comfortable chair would be a chair you sit in and you never get up. You sit in this chair, you're you, you're just, you're the chair now. That's a perfect 10 out of 10. If there's ever a chair that is a perfect 10 out of 10 chair, I am never getting up again. That would be just ridiculous. And that's that's just my general thought of this. So that, that's going to be the end of my video here. I just haven't seen any reviews of the actual or just statements on an actual Eames Lounge chair. Plenty of YouTubers and other uh, people have been talking about the actual replicas, but they haven't really compared it to the actual. That's another thing. Uh, if I get enough views and enough subscriptions or whatever it is, I'm not asking for them. I'm not saying that, but if I get enough interest in this video on this chair in particular, 
and people are commenting on it, I will actually buy a replica and I will compare the replica to the real McCoy and give you what I really think you should be as an afford decision to buy. When it comes right down to it, the only reason why I bought this chair is because of a childhood dream of actually owning the chair from Frasier. That was really the only reason. And because I actually own this, it's really cool. It's always going to be worth something, and that's what it means to me. But other than that, if I was someone who was just looking for a chair similar to this, just for the comfort level, and I didn't have $5,000 to spend or some notion of wanting this for that reason, I would definitely pick up one of the replicas over this. Do not spend $5,000 on a chair that has uh, unless, when there's others that have the own, probably the same comfort level as this chair for one-fifth or even one-tenth the cost. So that's my general thing about this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, and if you want to give me more feedback on this or any future videos or other reviews, uh, go ahead and post it down in the comments below. Uh, you can reach me on Twitter. Uh, I have a Twitter. I'll post that down there. And I also have a Twitch channel that uh, I'm terrible at uh, because I'm terrible at uh, games and everything. But I try to have fun, but sometimes I can get a little bit too ragey for my own good. But if you all enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you didn't like it, go ahead and hit that big thumbs down. And as always, live good talking. Be good talking. See you later, guys. Now I'm going to take a nap.